Today we're going to learn Bruno Mars's Treasure. I know Uptown Funk is the big hit, but there's already a lot of videos out there already covering that tune. If anybody wants me to do that one, I can totally do it, just let me know, and I'll do that. But let's dive into this one a little bit. So the basic structure of this tune consists of an intro, a verse, a chorus, that's repeated, it's followed by a bridge, and then you're back into the chorus, which is all part of a larger outro or ending of the tune. The entire tune is really based on the same chord structures throughout. The only difference is you start playing them up an octave for the higher energy chorus and bridge section of the tune. There's a separate little rhythmic motif that occurs on a B flat octave during the B flat sus periods of the tune, but they're slightly different going into and coming out of each section of the tune. So that's something that we'll have to go over. It's going to be really important that you download the PDF chart and check out those two rhythms so that you're sure exactly which one you're playing where. This is a great tune to talk about mostly because the chord voicing that you're playing in each instance doesn't necessarily contain the root. The root motion of the chords within the tune is quite linear, giving the tune a pretty easy feel. That bass line is countered with these movable triad voicings all over the guitar neck that give us the chords that we need for the tune. It's some pretty slick harmony that we'll talk about as we get into these chord voicings. A lot of the muting is going to be between the left hand and the right hand, much like we talked about in the funky portions of the Lizzo Juice video that I did a couple weeks ago. Left hand muting is going to be really important to keep each one of these chords from ringing out on you when you don't want it. But a lot of the funk stuff really comes from right hand palm muting, in which we're just touching the strings right here on the outer portion of a palm in between each one of those little funk strokes. So I'm going to talk about this style of muting over this first chord in the verse, the A flat major 7. I can use my left hand to control the duration of this chord by just slightly removing the pressure from the actual strings of the guitar. I'm not going to release my fingers from the strings, but I'm just going to remove pressure. In those instances, I'm actually going to use my right hand in between each moment where I'm releasing pressure on that chord, stopping it from ringing, and I'm going to mute a little scrub with my right hand. So you get this kind of sound. The chord duration is stopped in my left hand, scrubbing is being muted by my right hand. My right hand alone, no pressure on this a flat major 7 chord, but I am muting with my left hand, is going to sound something like this. There I'm really controlling that sound with the outer portion of my right palm. This kind of information comes in super handy when we're talking about the rhythms that are played in the B flat octaves in measures 16, 17, and in measure 29. As you saw when I played this in the intro part of the video, I'm actually continuing the right hand picking motion, but I'm still getting the notes exactly where I want them in the rhythm. That muting is primarily coming from my left hand, where I'm just barely touching the strings with my right hand, but it allows me to keep this right hand moving while getting the strings around it muted. So let's get into the chord voicings on this tune. We're actually going to start with the chord that's in the intro, the B flat 7 sus that begins with a pickup on the uh of four. We're gonna build this chord out of essentially an A flat major triad with a ninth on top. So I have an A flat here under my third finger, fourth string, sixth fret. I have a C right here under my second finger, third string, fifth fret. I have an E flat right here under my first finger, second string, fourth fret. And I have under my pinky here a B flat or the ninth of the A flat major triad, first string, sixth fret. And the intro is going to go a little something like this. Next up, let's talk about the chords that make up the verse. This is a 16 bar section, and the last two measures are over that B flat 7 sus with the rhythmic B flat octaves that we talked about a little bit earlier. The chord voicings start with an A flat major 7. We're going to put A flat here under our pinky, 6th fret, 4th string, C here under my 3rd finger, 5th fret, 3rd string. I'm going to put E flat here under my 2nd finger, 
This is the fourth fret, second string. And then I'm going to put G, the seventh of A flat, here into my first finger, third fret, first string. Next up is a G minor 7 chord, but I'm actually playing a B flat major triad right here, starting on the 8th fret. My third finger is going to be on B flat, 4th string, 8th fret. My second finger is going to be on D, 3rd string, 7th fret. My first finger is going to be on F, 2nd string, 6th fret. My next chord voicing is an F minor 7 but I'm actually moving this B flat major triad down a whole step to an A flat major. From there, I'm gonna move up to an A flat major seven chord, but I'm gonna play a C minor triad here at the 10th fret. You'll see my third finger, fourth string, 10th fret. First finger is barred, third string, eighth fret, first finger, second string, eighth fret giving me a C minor triad. My next chord voicing, G minor 7, I'm returning to that B flat major triad. Next up, the B flat is the same as what's in the bass. So we maintain our B flat major triad right here. And finally, we end with a C minor triad here over the C minor chord. Now you're probably asking yourself, how does this work? So this is where we talk about the smoothness of the line that's being played by the bass player. That linear motion combined with these chords makes this pretty slick harmony. The A flat actually occurs over our very first chord, an A flat major seven. From there, the bass player moves down to a G while we're playing a B flat triad. These two things together give us a G in the bass with a B flat, the minor third of a G minor chord, a D, the fifth of a G minor chord, and an F, the seventh, making it a G minor seven. G, B flat, D, F. Same thing occurs right here for the F minor chord. This gives us an F minor seven with an F in the bass. We have an A flat, the minor third of F minor, C, the fifth of F minor, and E flat here on top, the seventh of an F minor chord. That bass player moves back up to an A flat while we play a C minor triad. That C minor triad gives us an A flat major seven chord. C being the third, E flat being the fifth, G being the major seventh. From there we move back to that G minor seven sound, that B flat triad that you see. It's followed by the bass player moving up to a B flat, which makes us a full B flat major triad, B flat, B flat, D, F, and then up to a C minor triad, C, C, E flat, G, a C minor triad. So let me put that whole verse in context for you. measure 14, you see that we return to that A flat major triad, followed by the G minor 7, down to the F minor 7, and then from right here we have a slight change. The F minor 7 is played again with this F in the bass. Bass player comes up to an A flat. We don't need to move this A flat major triad to get the sound that we want right here before going to this B flat seven sus. This is the transitional period that gets us into the chorus of the tune. There are two separate overdubbed guitar parts here. One, there are two whole note four beat B flat seven sus chords. These take place in measure 16 and measure 17. And again, we're gonna play the very first chord that we talked about for the intro of this tune, an A flat major triad with a ninth on top. So A flat here, fourth string, third finger. That's going to be on the sixth fret. C, 
fifth fret, third string, second finger, E flat, second string, fourth fret, first finger, and a B flat here on top under my pinky, sixth fret, first string. The second overdubbed guitar part is playing a rhythmic B flat octave. This is repeated twice. Just as that B flat 7 sus chord is. From there, we move to the chorus of the tune. The same chord voicings apply, but now we're moving them up an octave. This gives us a little bit more energy in the chorus part of the tune, and it also changes the melody note that's on top of each one of the chords. The same principles apply. The bass player is still playing the same root notes, and we're still playing the same triads, but now we're playing them in different inversions. For the A flat major chord, we're playing the upper voices of a C minor 7 chord. I'm still here at the 10th fret with my 3rd finger on the 4th string, I'm going to bar my 1st finger across the 8th fret, 3rd string, 2nd string, 1st string, getting an E flat on the 3rd string, a G on the 2nd string, and a C on the 1st string. From there, I'm moving to a B flat triad here at the 12th fret. My 3rd finger is going to be on the 12th fret of the 4th string. My first finger is going to be on the 10th fret, 3rd string. My third finger is here on B flat, the 11th fret of the 2nd string. So I have a D, F, B flat, 1st inversion, B flat triad. That moves down to an A flat triad. That's going to get us our F minor chord. I have a C here, 10th fret of the 4th string, under my third finger. I have an E flat here on the third string under my first finger, eighth fret, and I have an A flat here under my second finger, ninth fret, second string. From there, I'm going to move from that voicing as an F minor back to my A flat major chord or my C minor triad. The next voicing I have is back to that B flat major triad. But now I'm going to use my first finger to bar at the 10th fret because I want this D on top. 10th fret, first string, first finger. From there, I'm going to play that voicing again on the B flat, move it down to a C minor triad again. And then from there, I go C minor, B flat, A flat major 7, but it's our C minor triad. So the chorus actually looks something like this. In bar 28, you return to that B flat 7 sus. Or that A major triad with a ninth on top. The bar that follows, we return to this B flat octave idea. But now the rhythm is different. We have pairs of 16th notes broken up by 16th note rests. Or, like we talked about when we were talking about our right hand muting, this idea. <laughs> Portions of this tune that are played up an octave and down an octave are very important. First, verses and the outro are played down an octave. So our A flat major 7 chord is here. The chorus and the bridge are played up an octave. So our A flat major 7 chord is here. So let me give you a run through of what a verse will look like. This is what the chorus is going to look like.
This is what the bridge is going to look like. Finally, we have our outro. So I hope this video has been really helpful for you. Make sure you download the PDF chart, check that out, play it along with the recording. It'll help you learn it a whole lot faster. This is a great tune to work on. It's a lot of fun. It's pretty easy to put together, easy to jam along with the band. It's a great thing to check out. Like I said earlier, if anybody wants me to do Uptown Funk, please leave a comment. Let me know. I can put that video together for you and post it in a couple weeks. So that's it for this week. I hope this was helpful. I hope it's been fun. And we'll see you soon.